Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kyra and I am here today to show you how I've changed up how I'm organizing my tarot wish list and therefore my tarot and oracle purchases to ensure I continue with mindful curation of my tarot library. Okay, so in my video where I talked about do I really need the Wildwood Tarot, which is linked up above in the cards, I talked about how I would be doing this video. And this video is meant for me to show you how, I've, how I'm changing how I go about purchasing tarot decks. And in order to help facilitate that, how I also have changed up my wish list in and of itself. So, previously, I had my wish list here on a tab with my family budget. That way, I was trying to make it so that way, I have this thing that happens where, like, I'll really want something, and then when I get money, I can't, I can't remember the thing I really want. And then I buy something random because I have this urge to buy something, and I'm trying to stop that. So I was like, if I put my wish list in with my budget, that will help because I can just flip over and look at the things. But I realized when I was filming the section of my tarot deck declutter, which was the last one to go up of my nature decks, it's linked up above in the cards, I realized how... I work best with my decks is to find little like groupings. I, I like creating little tarot deck families that here's this deck family and I use it for this purpose. So we'll circle back to that idea in a minute. What I started off with was this wish list where I had organized them into types of decks. So that way I was like, if I was wanting a deep work deck, I would look in the deep work oracle um, or in the deep work section and I would pick something from there. I did do that, but um, then I had this epiphany while filming that, oh my gosh, I need my decks to be in families because that's how I work with them. Like my Star Secret Tarot and my Heavenly Bodies Astrology deck. I, when I got the book to and put them together, that was realizing that I wanted to put the Star Secret Tarot with the Heavenly Bodies was the determining factor. It was one of the biggest things in my mind, which is why I picked that one instead of the others in my Say Yes to the Deck episode with Lisa and Peggy, linked up above as well. And... I do the same thing with my Witch's Wisdom Tarot and my Seasons of the Witch Oracles. I wasn't sure about getting the Seasons of the Witch Oracles, and then I it occurred to me that I could use them with my Witch's Wisdom Tarot to, um, to do my Wheel of the Year readings. So I end up creating little families. So I have my Witch's Wisdom family, which is the Witch's Wisdom and my Seasons of the Witch Oracle, and those I use for my Wheel of the Year readings. I have my Star Seeker Tarot and my Heavenly Bodies Astrology deck, and that's what I use for my predictive astrology work. There's something about putting the things together that I start to get really inspired, and so I use my decks more. And the whole thing that I've realized in this depth year, I mentioned it in a video. If I can figure out what video it was, I'll find and link that too. Um... I realized that I wrote a list of all my decks and I realized only about 70 or only like 30% of them did I have a way I would use them. But the rest, I didn't have like a purpose. I didn't, so they were just sitting there. So all of this information kind of coalesced into my head into this brilliant idea of reinventing how I go about purchasing my tarot decks and my oracle decks. My goal this year is to be able to look back and see and say, this is what I use my decks for, 
for the decks that I have. And if I can't find what I want to use it for, I have to determine if I'm willing to prioritize that. And that's where revamping and my new uh, wish list comes in. So this is my tarot collection and wish list because all of this information is in one document. I split them up and I'm using some color coding as you can see. So up here at the top is a really good starting example. This is my Pagan Wheel of the Year readings. That is what I use these decks for. And the decks in this category are my Witch's Wisdom Tarot, as I mentioned, and the Seasons of the Witch Oracle. They're supposed to be coming out with all five, or all eight, so I listed all eight. And then the ones I have so far are in red. So I have the Witch's Wisdom, I have the Seasons of the Witch, Yule, Samhain, and Beltane. So those are red. So I can see I still have some to get before this family is complete. My idea is by doing this, I can determine, I can kind of, I want to complete the families that I have first. I want to find the ways to work with decks first. And if I want to add a deck to my wish list, I have to be willing to put in the time and effort to determine what its family member would be, which pairing I could give it that would be very inspiring. So that way I would be more likely to use it. But I'm focusing on using this so that way I can kind of complete my library of deck families so that way I come to the point where I'm using all of my stuff. So some of them are complete. So I've got my, and all of them have the same thing. Um, I've got a highlight in the little groupings that I'm hoping to do. If I know what type of work that little grouping is for, then I write it in. So like I said, the witch, the Pagan Wheel of the Year readings, that's complete. I know what I use these decks for. I know which decks I'm going to be getting. It's just a matter of getting them as they are released. My predictive astrology work. I use my Star Seeker Tarot and my Heavenly Bodies Astrology deck. That's a completely finished family. So it has the title, it has the highlight section to differentiate it from the others, and I have both of them. So I also have here, so here's an example of one where I don't yet know. The Cozy Witch Tarot, I have pre-ordered it, but I do not have it yet. So it's still in black, and I'm not sure what I would want to use those decks for together. I know I would want to use them together by because they're by the same... Uh, the same uh, duo of creators, the same artist and uh, writer, um, but I'm not sure what yet. So they are a family. That's how I want them to be. That's what I want to try, but I'm not sure what their work would be for yet, and I don't have this yet. The other cool thing is this has allowed me to try and find things. So initially I had the Shimmering Veil here where Tarot of the She is. And just recently I was looking at the Shimmering Veil. I almost bought it. And I was like, I'm not sure. And then I don't understand. I don't remember how it happened. But on a whim, I was like, I wonder how my soul cards would look next to my Tarot of the She. Because the whole thing with the Shimmering Veil is I keep trying to, I want to buy a deck that hits that intuitive spot for me. I love when I get to do readings where I'm out of my head and I'm just activating and um, able to speak more intuitively, but I don't know how to get there on purpose. It just kind of happens. And I don't currently have any decks where I'm like, I know if I pick up that deck, it will, it will get me there. So I was like, I got a bug up my butt and I was like, I want a deck that'll be make, put me in that highly intuitive headspace. And I thought the Shimmering Veil, which I still, it's, the Shimmering Veil's not fully out of my brain. But then I was like, wait a minute, 
I have the Tarot of the She, and I feel like that could be really intuitive for me. And so then I decided to put it next to my soul cards, um, one and two, and I love it. So that's a family I've just created the other day. It's got a question mark because I'm not 100% sure how it works, how it will work. I have to still test it. And the funny thing is, even the bags even kind of go together. Like, they both have the, like, colored splotch shit going on. This is my Tarot of the She. This is my Soul Cards. Like, they, they kind of go together. So that's a new family I created through this process. Um, okay. So the next group, this is what started it all. I have the Animal am Allies. And when I was filming the Natri video, which I mentioned is already up above in the cards, when I was filming it... I realized that it has a very, very, very close backing to the animal allies, um, the terra fauna and the animal allies have very similar backing and that was what spurred this all because I was looking at the terra fauna next to the animal allies and I started to get excited and inspired because I don't use my animal allies. So, see, there's nothing here. I do not use my animal allies. I'm sorry if you hear that noise. I don't know what's going on. Um, but there's nothing here. I don't know how to use my animal allies. And it, so it occurred to me in that moment that if looking at the two together, I start to feel inspired and excited to work with them together. So that that's what started this all. So that's a family... I want to create uh, the seed and sickle oracle from the moment I saw it I knew it belonged with the Pacific Northwest tarot which I really want which I keep telling myself like I keep trying to talk myself out of because I'm like I'm not from the Pacific Northwest and fuck that shit so and it's this one is blue because it's got a hyperlink on it I don't know what I would use them for, but I know I want them to be a group. I've got the Ganeshian Village Tarot, um, which I want to pair with the Whispers of Lord Ganesha Oracle. I've got the Happy Tarot. I have my Cosmovisions Oracle, which I use for ancestor work. But see, look. Here, here's a deck. Here's a deck I have that I don't currently use. Here's a deck I have I don't currently use. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here, here, here. See the pattern? And that's why I'm doing it this way. And my focus is to fucking finish this list. And I realize here, silly, silly lady that I am, I don't have... There. I had to add my Boo Tarot, which is on its way to me. I'm so excited. And my I'm Here Oracle. Okay. I have no clue what's making the noise, so I'm going to try and finish this up. Someone's doing something, and it's loud and annoying. So, I'm going to try. I really hope you, that the sound isn't awful. I'm sorry if it is, but I'm just going to try and wrap this up, because I don't know how long this bullshit's going to be. The whole idea of this is this way, before I go gallivanting around buying a bunch of more decks, I want to address this. I've got numerous decks here that haven't been paired and that I don't have a purpose for in my collection. So having this set up like this, this will tell me multiple things. This will tell me, first of all, am I willing to put in the time and effort to get to know and to find the way I use some of these decks that I already have. I am missing to my, I'm missing here my, um, Playful Heart Tarot. Playful Heart Tarot. There you go have that one. 
so my quest is to finish this, to have this list, all of them to have a job. The Cozy Witch Tarot, it comes out next year, so that I'm waiting for. That's okay. Um, the idea is to finish this up, so that way when I want to... When I want to buy a deck, I want to turn to this first. When I want to buy a deck, I want to turn to this and say, okay, I'm looking for a deck. What can I complete here? What family can I complete? Can I get the, should I get the Goddess Love and Goddess Dream Oracles to work with my Forest of Enchantment? So I start working with that more. Um... Should I get the Awakened Soul Oracle to go with my Light Seers? I want to complete the families. Uh, the only thing that's slightly different is my work decks here. These ones here are ones that I don't necessarily have an idea of a family for them. That I'm okay if I don't come up with a family for them because they're workhorse decks. Like, the This Might Hurt Tarot, I can throw down and read for anything. Um... So I can use it and do use it for anything randomly. Um, and if I, and I, the queer tarot, which a friend gave me, it feels very similar. And if at some point I get an idea for a family for one of these decks, then I'll take it out and give it its own thing and that's fine. But they're totally fine as standalone decks as long as I limit how many of them I have. Um, ba, 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 ba. here's another family I've got completed. I've got the Brady Tarot, and I just recently bought the Wild Wisdom Oracle by Maya Toll or Mia Toll, Maya. Um, and I think those two could work really beautifully together for some sort of seasonal based work. So I've got that. But look, all of these, all of, and there's a bunch here just on my wish list. So. I don't want to keep adding things to my wish list and just not working with what I have. I don't have the money to keep just impulsively adding things to my list without figuring out the stuff I have. And recently I really scared myself with it and that like I bought something and almost immediately realized I should not have bought it. It turns out it, it felt like a universal thing like I was meant to buy it so that way I could give it to my wife because she never would have bought it for herself kind of thing. And I never would have thought of it for her. But I realized, I realized in that process that like I was chasing a feeling. I wasn't necessarily looking for a deck because like right now the decks I want, I can't have until they fucking get here. I want my Boo Tarot. I want my Gentle Tarot, both of which I have to just simply wait. My Boo Tarot's on its way. My Gentle Tarot is supposed to be on its way in August. So I have no choice with those decks but to just simply wait. And I've had this habit where I, when I really want something specifically, I'll buy something else to fill that space in the interim. And then it's like, meh, when I get it. So... I want to start looking at my tarot deck curation this way. I want to go through this and see if I can make some matches between things I want and then just start completing the things. Now, in that previous video, I talked about how we would finish the conversation about the Wildwood Tarot. And I'd forgotten that I found something. So the Wildwood Tarot is right here. It is on my wish list. And that was because as I was going through my wish list, I found this. And I realized how fucking gorgeously the Old Ways Magic Oracle would go with the Wildwood Tarot. I, and then, yeah, I, and then I totally forgot. So I have this on my list 
So the Wildwood is staying on my wish list because it has a thing. But the idea being I will get the Wildwood Tarot when I can also get the Old Ways Magic Oracle at the same time. In the cases like this where I don't have either of the decks, it's it's going to be like my like the Spread Machine Oracle by Kimberly San. I will not get them until I can get both. That I, as another layer to just stop me and to just slow me down and get me to think more clearly and more purposefully and such. So that's what's going on. I'm going to be looking at buying my uh, decks in groups and and so that's that's what I want to do. Now there are certain instances where I won't be able to do that. My Pagan Wheel of the Year, they're being released one at a time. So it's easy, I'll just get them one at a time as they're released. Um, same with the ones where I have already have part of the family. I just want to tick off and, and get the rest of the family. Um, but here, so the Forest of Enchantment Tarot, the Goddess Love and Goddess Dream Oracle, I, I won't buy just one. I'll wait, I'll save, and when I have enough money, I will buy both. And then the rest of these I have to work to find their matches for and if I can't decide if it's worth worth the time and the effort to do so and that kind of thing and just build families of decks that I use. I'm going to reorganize it so that way all the like completed ones are closer to the top like I'm going to cut those Insert there. Hold on. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to organize it so that way when I, when I come in to do a purchase, I can just look at my thing and I can say, okay, here are ones that I don't really have families or here are ones that aren't complete yet. So I'm going to fucking complete them. I'm gonna get the tarot fauna next, for example, right? And that's what I'm doing. I gotta tell you, it was, it was quite the moment when I had that click in. Just realizing fully for myself that I need to work more, um, with more cognizance in my tarot purchases and with more purpose it to enable me to enjoy the things that I already so enjoy. I'm feeling really good about where it's brought me to and I'm feeling really good about this being able to turn to my wish list and say, okay, I have some expendable income. I would like something new. I really want to work with this deck. So I need to buy these decks to go with it. Um, it's better to buy five decks and use them all than to buy 10 and never use any, right? So just, I really think this way of shifting how I look at it and how I organize things will really help me moving forward in keeping my, my tarot library curated and keeping my purchasing mindful, which is kind of the whole point of this depth of your thing is to actually use my brain. So yeah, that's it. That's all I've got for you for now. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to let me know if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't hit all, if you haven't already and hit that bell notification so you can come on back nice and easily. Um, and yeah, in the description box below, you can find my website where you can book some time with me. I offer live sessions and, and I, I am starting to offer more pre-recorded readings. My readings, you can get a live Zoom session or like I said, pre-recorded. I do journaling consultations. I do astrology consultations where I teach you about your chart. I do a lot of work combining tarot and astrology to get very predictive readings, like looking at your solar return reading is looking at the next year, roughly how that's going to be, what the focus of that is, 
Mars return would be looking at the next two years, etc., etc. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. And of course, if you need any help or have any requests or questions, I have my email down in the description as well at uh, thecraftedwitchery at gmail.com. You can shoot me an email. I'd be happy to respond and help you out as best I can. And that's it for today. I'm going to let you go and I'll see you again soon. Lots of love. Bye.